and the heartaches, they don't matter anymore. And the price has never been too great to pay. But if the road grows steeper, I won't make it on my own. I'll be lost among the fools along the way. Ever thought that one trip to 
that which I was after Little did I know That my fingertips each day Was my peace of mind Just a prayer away As a child each night My mom would take us to the Lord in prayer Then after we would close our eyes to sleep Through the years I drifted from the things I learned back then Just one prayer last night that all back to me Who would have ever thought that one trip to the altar would end a life of searching and bring that which I
listener-supported Heartland Public Radio is raising over $2,000 between now and July 1st. We need your help to reach this important financial goal. Please visit www.hpr.org and click on Donate. It'll take just a moment of your time to choose an amount that you can afford and make your pledge of support to HPR. You can pledge online, by mail, or by telephone. The choice is yours. We're counting on you, our faithful listener, to help. www.hpr.org. Thank you.
seen my daddy inside a house of God. For Satan held his hand down the path of sin he trod. First time I heard about heaven Mama was smiling and rocking my cradle And singing Won't it be wonderful There I can still see Her happy tears are falling And I can still hear my mother in prayer Now if the walls are not Them. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just getting everything hooked up. 
and I missed a phone call. Uh, we went to church tonight, me and the wife and my daughter-in-law, Crystal uh, Chaney, Dwayne's uh, wife, and my couple of grandchildren, Caitlin and uh, uh, Cheyenne. We went to church here, uh, right here on uh, Plateau Road here, and we just got back, and I came down and got everything fired up and going, and then I had to run up and eat. You know how it is with us evangelists. We get hungry. I mean, uh, what can I say? It's the truth, amen? And while I was getting the board hooked up here, to, I missed a phone call. I apologize for that, and... Uh, I do say I'm sorry, but uh, if you want to call back, we are now at the operating controls. We uh, we can take phone calls. If you'd like to call in live, you can dial one nine three one four eight four four five. All right, let me check it here. Hello, you've got the gospel music jukebox. Who do we have on that end? You have Pastor Eddie Gary from Cookville, Tennessee. Amen. Well, did you just try to call and I missed you there a while ago? Uh, about two, three times. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. We was, <laughs> we was running late tonight. We just got in from church. And, uh, uh, well, every... I understand that. Hey, Amen. I wanted to call and uh, give my prayer request tonight. Um, I've got a need in my life. I need I need the Christian people just to agree with me and pray with me. I, I just need some prayer. Amen. God knows all about him, knows my heart. All right. We we sure will pray. Amen. Just pray that God's will be done. A little bit of concern uh, about the church and about, you know, people coming and stuff. I mean, it's... When you're a pastor, you worry about things like that. Amen. Amen. And uh, just... We didn't have nobody show up tonight, so be, remember the members, remember the people, you know, that they'll, they'll get a desire. I preached this morning that uh, a lot of the churches, I mean, we need to get the, we're weighted down. People's weighted down, Brother Eddie, and then they get the weight off of them uh -huh. where they can be loosened and they can go to the house of the Lord and, and be fed of the Spirit of the Lord and and do what God would have them to do. Amen. Go get filled up. So you Spirit of the Lord and do, do what God would have them to do. Amen. But I want you to be, I want you to be much in prayer for the soul filling station rock church. We sure that we'll be doing the Father's will. Amen. We sure will. We surely will pray, brother. I mean, without people coming in, Hello. we don't have no church. Uh huh. Yes. Without, but, I mean, we the people to church. Amen. So pray, pray that God's will be done. And I preached, I preached a message this morning that, uh, uh, have you ever, have you ever seen people where they get bags of garbage and they, 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 they pile it up and they keep on forgetting to take it to the road for the garbage man to come and pick it up? Uh-huh. What happens when you leave that garbage there long enough? Well, it draws all kinds of maggots and flies and it stinks. Uh-huh. It... It, it, it draws all kinds of varmints, rats. Well, well, turn that around and, and do it spiritual way. Do it, do it the spiritual uh -huh. realm. And, and see, and, um, if people would do this and, and meditate upon it, Brother Eddie, you know, um, they, they build up, they build up, and they build up, and they build up. around you you can't move i had a vision I, and i guess this is why i had this vision first i had a vision i was in a big old tree and the limbs and the leaves i i, I didn't hear i, I couldn't smell nothing but the leaves and and it was so 
I mean, it's just like in a big old round ball, like you, you, you balled up. Folks, we got to get out of that. And we got to get where we can get some fresh air where God can bless his people. Go to God and be blessings to others. You know, that's why you come to church, for you come to uh, expect a blessing from God. You come to expect a mighty move of God. You come to, to receive a miracle. You come to receive what God has for you. Now, if you got all this garbage piled up, and you got all these uh, varmints that are trying to eat it and stuff, it's not good. It's not a good thing. You got to do away with that stuff. And, uh, and where God can clean you up, and that way you can come into the church. How can you be a doer of the Word of God if you don't come to the house of God to get filled up to go out in the community where well, you can go out and feed the, the flock? That's the question. Amen. Amen. I mean, I, I mean, you know, uh, there's some people can't come. I understand that. There's some people, well, I'm talking about local people. I'm talking about local people yeah. right here in Coolfield, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. Close enough they could, uh, uh, like you said, they could almost walk. <laughs> almost walk. Yeah. But listen, they want they want him to turn up. They want him to go outside. Listen, it's a big old dinner. My mama called me today. I love her so. And they, they was having uh, a dinner tonight, and they was having a sing. Uh-huh. I told Mama, I said, well, Mama, I'm going to be there, honey. I'm not going to a church just to eat dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go, yeah, I'm going to go eat dinner, but I want to eat the good of the land. I'm going to eat God's word. Amen. You know, people's got, people's gotten this all out of way. They want to have dinners. They want to have this. They want to have picnics. They want to have all this. And we can't even get the church in order. I didn't mean call preach. God, obey the Lord. <laughs> but I, I, I'm trying to tell people we need to wake up and, and get a vision of this. Glory to God, because garbage stinks. Yeah, you got that right. Come on. Garbage stinks. And, 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 and how you get rid of it is uh, most places it's got a dumpster, got a truck that comes by and picks up the dump. I mean, picks up the garbage. But if you don't volunteer, take that out to the road, let that garbage man pick that up, glory to God, he ain't going to pick it up. He ain't going to come in your yard and pick up the garbage. you got to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. In other words, you got to come to the house of God yourself. In other words, you've got to come and get delivered. Woo, I feel good. <laughs> Bless him, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you you got to get out. I mean, you can't just like, uh, well, people come on Sunday morning, they won't come back on Sunday night, they get enough. I, I mean, I told Rick, I said, well, I'm about ready to just shut down Sunday night service and just have Sunday morning service. And I, and, I, and, I, and then I had to think, I had to, I had to realize, no, I can't do that. I was at church tonight, brother, to 6.30. God told me to leave. If people ain't going to show up, why should I waste my time and my gas to go to the house of God if they can show up? And we can have a church right here in this thing like we're having right now. Amen. You can have church anywhere, that's a fact. Where two or three are gathered up, Jesus is well, in the that's midst. That's right. And Amen. I'm talking about the local people. I'm, that's who I'm talking about. Amen. The local Amen. Oh, Brother Eddie, I, I love you, Brother Eddie. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to come. I'm going to stay with you until doomsday. Not once people start flying like flying. <laughs> what's wrong with that? I, I, I love mean, you, Brother. They got the garbage in their lives, and they they got to get rid of it. Amen. I got a word for you, yo. I may have an answer for it. Amen. I got a word for you. You, you hear me? Uh -huh, I'm all right, here's a word. If if uh, this is to all pastors, this is to all pastors. God gave me this word about three months ago to share with, and I share it with every pastor when I feel the need, and I feel the need to give this word to you. If 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 God has called you to pastor, and you go there and nobody's there, brother, preach the word. 
preach the word and obey God, just like you done, mm-hmm. just like you done, just like you've been trying to do, and and obey God, and they'll either get in or they'll get out. And if you obey God, and if God is raising up a ministry, there ain't nothing in hell can stop it. That's a word that I share to these pastors well, that are know struggling. What? You just said. You just gave me my. Well, now that's that's from God. That that's uh, God's well, good. Well, and I'm just saying, you just <laughs> God gave you my answer, and that's. Amen. It's for the fact is, I would have lived. Well, Nobody. <laughs> hey, praise God. Praise God. Well, well praise the Lord. I ain't complaining about it. Yeah. You're just hurting for the one. There's more people out there. Yeah, you're hurting. And they're wanting to Yeah, you're they hurting. They want rid of this stuff. Hey, Amen. You're hurting but for the one that didn't hold come. Holding it back. Holding it back. Holding it back. And before you know it, it well, it's going to be so much garbage, sir. You can't even see every CO. Hey, Amen. Here's you some more word. When when you're hurting like that for the sheep that ain't ain't being faithful, you leave the ninety and nine and you go after the one. If, if if it's on your heart, brother, go to them, talk to them, and find out why they ain't coming. Go go be a friend, go witness to them, and and uh, let them know that you love them. And uh, when they can be there, you know, but they got to show some faithfulness, like you said. They got to get up. They got to show some faithfulness, and uh, it it's the job of the pastor. When one is uh, straying away or one's gone out, you need to leave that 90 and 9, or in your case, leave the 4 and go after the 1. And uh, pack them back with love, brother. Pack them back with love. That's, that's Well, I asked them. I asked them, brother. They asked them, what's wrong? Why ain't you just coming? Uh-huh. Oh, I'm, I just ain't felt good, brother. Eddie. Oh, I feel bad today. Yeah. Oh, I've got some that they'll, they'll come for a month or two, a year or two, and they'll say, well, God's told me to leave. Yeah. Well, if God's told you to leave, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. I ain't talking about the ones that God right. moved down. Right, right. And put somewhere else. Right. But I believe that God, if God's put, I mean, if, if God's you out of that church, they got, I mean, God's going to bring more people. Amen. Amen. And that's I also it. believe that... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I also believe you ought to be somewhere in church. Amen. Amen. You ought to be somewhere doing something for the glory of God. I know keepers down here at uh, Miller Bridge are waving people in, <laughs> preaching to them, or talking Amen. to them, or, or praying for them. Amen. So you're doing something for God. Amen. God's I'm not trying to throw up those slurs, brother. Eddie. No, no. You, you love, you, you love your sheep. If people want a church, and if I want a church, we're going to have to work on it harder than what we are. I hear you. The best advice I can give you is don't put your trust in man. Put it all in God. If God told, you, if God told you to raise up a ministry, you go on and raise it up. And the ones that come will stay. The ones that don't, they miss out on what God had for them. But uh, you just got to be faithful with the call that God's give you, brother, and uh, love them like you're doing. You're 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 loving them. You're giving them a word. That's a good word about the garbage. I like that. That's a good. That's a God word. <laughs> I like that. You got to well, clean. I you got to pick up the garbage and take it to the street. Amen. It was stronger this morning than it was tonight. Yeah. Well, <laughs> praise God. Praise God. God's I good. Well, I, I want. I want to get so bold, brother Eddie. I want, I want, I want, I want God just to milk me in His love. Amen. I, I just want God to milk me in His word. I, I, I want to stay. I want to be like that fourteen-year-old boy. He don't watch TV. He don't uh, do none of that stuff. He stays in the Word of God. Amen. That's what we all need to do as much as we can. And we can do that if we will. There you go. But there's a price you got to pay. You got to pay it. Amen. There's a cost. I mean, you got to count the cost. I mean, you got to you got to outweigh the good and the bad. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Amen. Amen. 
Well, it sounds like the Lord's working, the devil's mad, and I'm glad. And oh, brother, the devil's mad. Amen. He's mad and hot. Boy, I mean, he's <laughs> mad. I mean, he's trying to come against the church like it ain't nobody's been. That's what You know mean. what? They're going to stand. Amen. The Bible says stand firm. Amen. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to stand firm and not rock. There you go. There, there it is. There's the answer. Stand on the rock. Stand Jesus is the rock. rock. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. Eddie. I just had to call. And, uh, and thank you. Well, thank you. Praise God. Call anytime, brother. I love it. All right. I love you, man. I love you, brother. Eddie. Right. I love everybody in the chat room, too. All right, brother. We love you, man. God tell, bless you, hey, brother. tell Sister Vicky we said hey and Tracy and them. All right. She's on the. Uh, She's in the chat room there. Okay. All right. I'll check it out here then. God bless All right. you. Love you, brother. All right. Love you, man. God bless. Bye. Bye-bye. Praise God. Amen. There's a pastor that cares for his sheep. He's hurting, and he's sharing it, and God's moving, and he's checking on the sheep and encouraging them to come on out to the house of God and get filled up right there at the Soul Filling Station. Rock Church in Cookville, Tennessee. Get down there, get filled up, get out about the Father's business. Get out and check on the widows, the orphans, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit those that are shut up in hospitals and prisons. Be busy for God. Amen. Then you ain't got time for the devil in the devilish ways. Praise God. I love it. I like that word about the garbage. That's pretty good. I like that. Boy, God's good like that, ain't he? Well, we were blessed tonight, too. We went to, the Lord sent us, and uh, we were blessed to go to uh, Lawrence Chapel, Church of God, a prophecy here on Plateau Road, and uh, uh, some singing. They had, man, it was awesome. I run into a brother that I'd uh, actually um, worked with about 15 years ago, probably 10 to, yeah, 10 to 15 years ago. There, uh, when I ran into him, he was working out of a crab orchard. Dwayne, I can't remember his last name. But anyhow, uh, we'd actually been uh, together for a little while. And uh, he played bass for us a time or two. And, uh, man, God just set them on fire. They actually got the name of their group tonight. Uh, when they introduced him, the pastor there at uh, the church was introducing them. He said they don't have no name right now, but about halfway through the singing, um, one of them was uh, sharing that God had been uh, impressing it upon their heart. Uh, they're going to call themselves the latter rain. Amen. So uh, it, it's just been a good day all the way around. This morning, I had an awesome Bible study. Amen. On Bible study 101, you want to check that archive out. We're uh, teaching about a, well, I think I was up to number five, um, uh, but we it's going to be about a 14 or 15 um, uh, different program series is what it is on getting dressed, putting on the full armor of God. You can go back and listen to the first one all the way up to the fifth one I believe I've got up there. We've made it up to um, the uh, holding up the shield of faith. Amen. The fourth piece of armor that uh, Paul mentions there in Ephesians chapter 6. You can break in at verse 10. But you want to run over there and check out um, Bible Study 101. Amen. Also, remember, you can always call our testimony line. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You can call and share your testimony, and we'll put it on a CD and give it away. We'll play it here on one of the radio programs. Uh, I'm trying to uh, make a, a, a CD I can put over on Facebook and play those. Um Anyhow, we're trying to get that gospel out, amen, trying to get the word of God out to a lost and dying world. We're trying to get those prayers that you call in, praying for the needs of others. It may be that you pray for the homeless or the ones that are in jail or the ones that are drug infested and alcohol filled. It may be that you have a burden to pray for the lost. Pick up the, the phone, dial one nine three one two two nine zero seven six eight. Leave your pre recorded prayer for others, and we're going to put it on a CD and give it away. Uh, just be sure to leave your name, where you're calling from. Let's the people know that God's not dead. He's alive, and He's working. Yes, He is. He is working in, in and through His children. Wow, powerful. Amen. All right, praise God. We're going to. Jump back over here and uh, li oh, listen to some music, and I'll kind of update you. Sometime tonight, I'm going to try to get a few pictures up of the church service we were at. Amen. Uh, they have give us an open door to come and obey God. They're praying. If you're in the area right here, um, 
of, of Crossville, Tennessee, right down below Windridge Estate, right there on Plateau Road, Lawrence Chapel Church of God. Uh, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Wednesday nights. If you uh, in the area and you've got nowhere to go, uh, stop by. They're gonna love you so many ways. You're gonna you're gonna like one of them. I guarantee it. <laughs> God's everywhere. God's in Cookville, Tennessee. He's in Cookville. He's in Crossville, Tennessee. He's in. Um, my God, he's uh, in Florida. He's in Alabama. He's in Mississippi. He's in Scottsville, Kentucky. He's in Whitesburg and Knott County, Kentucky. He's everywhere. God is God. Amen. And besides him, there is none other, my friends. Ain't that awesome to know? Praise God. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Gospel Music Jukebox. Hey, I'm your host, Evangelist Brother Eddie Cheney, saying we love you. Now we there's no marriage supper, no gathering of millions to feast at the table, no singing, saved by his marvelous grace, so my soul. If my eyes should behold his sweet face Now if the walls are not jasper And if the streets are not gold If my mansion should just be a cabin I got a loose cord here. I got, hey man, <laughs> got a loose cord going on right here. I'll have to have to have to try to fix it. Hey man, we uh, it's uh, starting to cut the radio in and out. So we're going to run over here and check the testimony lines right now, right here on the Gospel Music Jude Box. So be blessed, hey man, in Jesus' name. later sometime when we're done with stuff and I got to make some good calls in the day a little bit ago I got to call in about the rich man and Lazarus that was a good uh, good uh, thing there talking about how we need to help needy people it was an intense call that I called in I've been well praise the Lord it cut off on us again so we're going to run over there and see if we can uh, get it back up and uh, try to play it again <laughs> the devil's mad and I'm glad I've read the end of the book 
we're winners. All we have to do, continue to endure to the end. Hold on to the unchanging hand of the great I am. Yeah, this is Pastor Eddie here from Cookville, Tennessee. I was just calling you and letting you know about the revival in Burstown, Tennessee. We'll start up the um, 15th of um, June, and it's going to run all week. And uh, Brother H.C. Bowman will be the minister. And uh, whoever can and will, let's load up and go and help this revival. Will you do that? Uh, we appreciate that, and uh, we want to pray. We want to take this moment, this minute right here, right now, and pray for. Bro- I'm gonna pray for Brother Eddie and, and his wife. Glory to God, and all the homeless people, and all the all the people that's uh, is lost and undone without Jesus. And I hope this right here touch somebody's life here tonight. Praise God. Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight, Father, Lord. We pray for the Cheney family, Lord. Lord, they've been so blessing to us, Father, Lord, and others, Father, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to bless them tonight. Heavenly Father, I ask you, Lord, to bless the lost people, Lord. Send them into some church, some board, Father. Lord, and I'm praying for this revival in Burstown, Tennessee, Father, Lord. It'll be so saved, Father. Lord, and I'm praying for the revival what Brother Chris Cheney is going to start up the 20th in, in Kentucky, Lord. I'm praying, Lord, right now in advance, Father. I'm praying, Father, for souls to be saved, Father. Lord, I just ask you, Lord, to reach them, Lord, and touch these people tonight, Father. Lord, touch the lost everywhere and touch the lame. Touch the, the ones that need the healing in their bodies, Father. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to heal them tonight, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, we praise your holy name today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We love you, Brother Eddie. God bless you. As our prayer, the Soul Filling Station Ross Church in Cookville, Tennessee. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Eddie Garrett. Amen. We love you too, brother. And we're praying right along with you for these revivals that's uh, God just pouring out his spirit upon all flesh in these end times. We pray that the lost reach out and grab a hold of that unchanging hand of the great I am. All right. Be blessed as we uh, listen to some more right here on the testimony line right here at the Gospel Music Jukebox. Hello, Brother Eddie. We love you, and we're praying for you. God bless you all. We're praying for you all. This is Brother Boyd, London, in Idaho. Uh, Jesus has been keeping us busy here, so I'll be on later sometime when we're done with stuff. And I got to make some good calls in today. A little bit ago, I got to call in about the rich man and Lazarus. That was a good good, uh, thing there, talking about how we need to help needy people. It was an intense call that I called in. I've been calling in today about the... uh, Doing the will of God, uh, here in Matthew 7, uh, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name, then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. See, Jesus uh, calls us to take up our cross, deny ourselves daily, and follow him, Luke 9, 23 through 26. Many people don't really do this, they don't want to get out there and uh, preach the word of God to people and call them out on sin. They have sin in their lives themselves. They don't want to pray for others. They don't want to help orphan kids or needy people and sacrifice their time and money. And uh, my testimony is I became a Christian uh, 21 years ago. I've been praying every day and asking Jesus to help me to love others and to do the will of God. And he's had me helping churches grow uh, from small missions teams to large churches. He's had me... uh, uh, we're helping the preschool program with the preschool program at our church now here. He's had me helping uh, many people that have been in prisons and going to the Wallen House drug rehab programs, discipling them, letting them learn about Jesus and how to overcome with Jesus also. He's had me helping uh, teen kids that have been in gangs and on drugs. Uh, I wrote a book called Finding Happiness about how God has helped me in my life. That's getting published uh, around the world in different places over in Europe and in uh, South Korea right now, so I get to do book signings at times and share my testimony with many people about my book, about how God and Jesus helped me to overcome sin, and it's helped me through trials and a severe back injury, and healed me, and it's helped me find happiness in my life, and I'm just uh, continually 
here involved with my family, uh, discipling, putting orphan kids in school. We help several orphan kids go through school. We disciple them and train them and help them through the pastors. We help the pastors and their churches out also. And we're just trying to help the needy as we're called to do in the parable of the sheep and the goats. And James 1.27, that tells us to help the orphans. And we're uh, preaching the Word of God, as we're called to do in Matthew 20, 18 through 20, to go make disciples of all nations, to teach them to obey everything and to baptize them. We're not playing church here. We're doing the will of God, sacrificing our time and money for the kingdom of God, and Jesus is using us. I hope more people can truly do, do the will of God, because the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. There's very few people, i found, that will actually do the work of Jesus. But many will be called workers of iniquity also. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. This cord is uh, messed up on my mic, so you guys pray tonight. I'm trying to hunt another one. Uh, the Lord's good. Thank you, Brother Boyd. Thank you, Pastor Eddie Garrett, for using the testimony line and taking time out of your busy day as you're busy about the will of the Father to call in and, and let the world know that God's not dead. He's alive, and he is working in the lives of his children. Man, that's awesome. Brother Boyd, you always excite me. Uh, praise God. Um, this song, i, I got to send it out to Brother Boyd because every time I hear him, he gets uh, happy. <laughs> Amen. And God's people, well, they're happy people. Amen. Give this a listen and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Gospel Music Jukebox. I'm your host, Evangelist Eddie Cheney, saying we love you, but God loves you most. Be blessed, church. Be blessed. Say amen Somebody start ringing a bell Heaven knows there's a whole lot of trouble Living down here below But we're smiling because when this old life is over We got someplace else to go whoa, whoa. God's people are happy people Happy all of the time a friend to the world See how much love you can give Life is more than the air you're breathing or Spending more than you can afford But happy are the people who always remember That happiness is the Lord Yeah, yeah God's people are happy people Happy all of the time Ten million reasons Learning through my soul and my mind God's people are happy people Happy people shine Shine, shine, shine Happy people shine Shine, shine, shine Happy people shine. 
don't want to get adjusted to this world because I'm leaving one of these days and one of these days sooner than most thinks. Amen. I'm going to go be with Jesus. If you're listening tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, my friend, today is the day of salvation. This is your hour. It's your moment. What are you going to do with Jesus Christ? As you listen to the music, the, the gospel of Jesus being preached through song, word, and testimony right here on the Gospel Music Jukebox, choose you this day whom will you serve. It's your day. It's your moment. You're alive. Thank God. He's got a purpose and a plan for your life. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with Jesus? It's your choice. We pray that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. We pray that you reach out and take a hold of that hand of the unchanging great I am. Amen. All right. Praise God. Uh, amen. Uh, my wife thanking God for getting her appetite back. She can eat again. Thank God. We've been praying. And I also got a good uh, a good report tonight. My wife is uh, going to be trying to gather up kids again Wednesday night to take them uh, to a church service so uh it's been a while for her to do that since uh she uh, the last uh time they did that there was a, a situation arose and uh you know it kind of hurt her a little bit and through prayer and her seeking god she's stepping back up to the plate and i am excited for her, and i'm praying that she just a double blessing as she gets back on the battlefield and does what god has called her to do amen he put it in her heart Amen. So I'm excited about what God is, is doing in the, in the lives of my family and my friends and, and in your life, friend, because whether you know it or not or whether you want to accept it, God is in control. He is in control. I know there's times it looks like the world is is controlling things, but it's not. You got to read the book, the Bible. You got to open your heart and allow God to write his word upon the tablet of your heart, my friend. And you'll see that he's got a heavenly divine plan. And you're in that plan. Yes, you are. For whosoever, if you'll reach out, if you'll go to Jesus with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, he'll in no wise cast you out, my friend. He'll take you. He'll take you. And he'll shape you into what he would have you to be. Reach out. Get things settled between you and God. Amen. We pray that you do that. All right, we're going to run over here to the testimony line. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Hello, Brother Eddie. I love you, and I'm praying for you. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho. I've been spending some time in prayer this afternoon. Jesus wanted me to call in and uh, blow the trumpet and warn the people. This is what we've been saying all the time, but, you know, we cannot get people to truly deny sin. They want to have the pornography and stuff in their lives. We can't get them to pray for others, as we're told to do in scriptures. We can't get them to help needy people. We can't get them to preach the word of God and go make disciples of all nations, as we're called to do in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus says to blow the trumpet and warn the people. As we know in Matthew chapter 7, many will say, Lord, Lord. And even prophesied in his name and cast out demons, but they will not have done the will of God. And he's going to look at them and tell them, Plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Jesus wanted me to read these scriptures here. The two ways of life. Matthew 7, 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Well, praise the Lord. It cut off again. Well, let's try to play it again. Hello, Brother Eddie. I love you, and I'm praying for you. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho. I've been spending some time in prayer this afternoon. Jesus wanted me to call in and uh, blow the trumpet and warn the people. This is what we've been saying 
all the time, but, you know, we cannot get people to truly deny sin. They want to have the pornography and stuff in their lives. We can't get them to pray for others, as we're told to do in scriptures. We can't get them to help needy people. We can't get them to preach the word of God and go make disciples of all nations, as we're called to do in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus says to blow the trumpet and warn the people. As we know in Matthew chapter 7, many will say, Lord, Lord, and even prophesied in his name and cast out demons, but they will not have done the will of God. And he's going to look at them and tell them, Plainly, I never knew you depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Jesus wanted me to read these scriptures here, the two ways of life. Matthew uh, 7, 13, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. There are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to life, and there are few who find it. He told me all these people, just like I've been saying, that are going to church on Sundays and going home and living their lives, living out the American dream, living the way they want, but not doing anything for Jesus and the kingdom of God. They're on the wide road. They're not on the narrow, difficult way that leads to heaven. And they're not gonna, they're not gonna make it there. Then over here, this is the standard, Jesus says, that applies to all of us as we stand before Him on Judgment Day, the true cost of discipleship, Luke 9, 23 through 26. And He said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. See, many people are saying, Lord, Lord, they said they pray Jesus into the heart and they are saved, but they don't lose their life for Jesus and the gospel. They won't truly obey the gospel and do the will of God. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Have you done anything for Jesus and the kingdom of God? Are you losing your life, denying yourself daily, taking up your cross, following Jesus? Are you truly denying in sin, going in sin no more? Are you taking the time to pray for others, denying yourself Pray for others' prayer needs. Are you taking time to help the needy, the orphan kids, the people in your community that need help? So we're called to do that in the parable of the sheep and the goats, otherwise we're a goat. Are you going out there making disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything, and baptizing them, obeying the Great Commission, going into the world, preaching the gospel to all creation? He who does not bear good fruit is hooned down and thrown into the fire. Many people are saying, Lord, Lord, but the harvest is plentiful and the worker is are few, and many will be told by Jesus as they stand before him that they were workers of iniquity and they won't make the cut. They weren't on the narrow road and they won't make it to heaven. Many church people, many religious people, many of our friends will not make it. We've got to warn them. We've got to blow the trumpet. God bless you all. Amen.
Hey, Chapa, this is Destiny, and I'm going to sing another song. <laughs> On the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, go telling on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold throughout the heavens, there shone the holy light. On the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds stood and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that held our Savior's birth. Oh, on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, go selling on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born and brought us that salvation that blessed Christmas morn. On the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, go telling on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ is born. Love you, Papa. Bye. Can you? 
I love you and God bless you. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho. If you don't mind me preaching a little bit and asking some questions, I want to ask you, whoever is listening to this and hearing this, what have you done for Jesus? What have you done for the kingdom of God? What have you done for Jesus? What have you done for the kingdom of God? See, I'm dealing with thousands and thousands of my friends and these people who are religious and love this prosperity stuff. God's going to bless you. God's going to prosper you. But we can't get them to deny sin. They don't want to stop doing their pornography. We can't get them to pray for other people. We give them prayer needs, ask them to pray. They won't pray for people. We can't get them to help orphan kids. They could absolutely care less about helping a needy person, a homeless person, or orphan kids. They just let them starve or die. We can't get them to preach the Word of God. All they want to do is go to church on Sunday, sing praise songs, say hallelujah to Jesus, and go live their lives the way that they want. They won't do anything for Jesus and for the kingdom of God. This really, really scares me. I see in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says many people are going to have said, Lord, Lord, like this, and had a form of religion, but they will have lacked doing the will of God. And Jesus is going to tell them plainly, I never knew you depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Many of these religious people, even people in my family, our friends, people we know, may stand before Jesus and may be told, you are a worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Because they won't go out and do the will of God. They won't be a doer of the word and not just a, not, not a hearer. They're a hearers of the word and not doers. James 1.22 says, be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. It says, faith without deeds is dead. If you see people destitute of daily food, such as orphan kids and needy people, and don't uh, go out there and help them, your faith is dead. Even the demons believe and shudder. It says in James 4.17, anyone that knows the good he should do and does not do it is living in sin. All these people, we ask them, they see good they should do, like praying for people, but they don't do it. They see good they should do, like helping orphan kids, but they could absolutely care less and they do not do it. They see good they should do, like preaching the word of God and sharing their faith, because we tell them to go out and do it, but they do not do it. And I'm very, very concerned that as these people stand before Jesus, they will find out that they have fallen short of the narrow road, the straight, hard path that leads to heaven. And Jesus will say, I never knew you, I never knew you, I never knew you. And many of these religious people will be burning in hell with all eternity with all the sinners because they would not love people. They would not have the love of Jesus in their hearts and go out and do the will of God and actually help people. And they'll be just as bad off as the sinners that never repented and had all that sin in their life. I hope we can truly go out there and do the will of God and live for Jesus and love people and help other people and have action to our faith. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And I can tell you the workers are very, very, very few. There's very few people that will do the will of God. God bless you all. Wait. 
child he'll be coming for his children and the monuments of sin will surely fall i can see by the word that the day is drawing nearer i'm not looking for the signs anymore i'm listening for the call word that the day is drawing nearer i'm not looking for the signs anymore i'm listening for the call hello brother eddie i love you and god bless you and i'm praying for you this is brother boyd london in idaho and what I was calling in to say is I'm kind of like you. I've involved right now kind of a universal Christian. I'm working with all kinds of pastors, ministers, uh, different people. I'm friends with a lot of them around the world, uh, even Church, Church of Christ people, Pentecostal people, Baptist people, Methodist people, all those different type people. I know um, I know a lot of them. And... Uh, I've uh, helped a couple different churches grow. We're helping Amazing Grace Fellowship Church here now with the preschool program from the young kids. And uh, I'm involved with Pastor Edwin over there helping out those orphan kids, which is a great thing to do. And by the way, Pastor Edwin is a very awesome uh, man of God. He's always very uh, just full of love and uh, uh, just just a just a great person over there. We've sent Bible study stuff stuff to him, and he's he's eager to learn and help those kids out. And uh, he's a great person to work with over there. A lot of these other ones from these different churches want to fight and argue with you a lot about their different doctrinal stuff. And if you don't go to their church, of course you're going to hell. I found out. But we're supposed to be universal Christians and work with all these different people and preach the word of God to them, get sent other lives, and make sure they're doing the will of God. Here's what I'm concerned about. Uh, a lot of these people, I can see it on my Facebook posts uh, and some of the groups where I, uh, we have a lot of people in some groups, and uh, we can post stuff on there like uh, Jesus loves you type stuff, God's going to bless you type stuff, ear tickling stuff, and you know everybody, hundreds and hundreds, thousands of people will like that stuff, and they say hallelujah. But if you go and ask them anything, such as helping an orphan kid, or ask them to do a testimony, or to pray for someone, you maybe get like one or two people out of 10 or 20,000 people, even out of these ministers that will actually pray for someone, or that even have a heart to want to even look at a picture or consider helping some orphan kids. People just don't care about doing anything for Jesus. This religious stuff has all become about how God can bless you and prosper you and what God can do for you and has nothing to do with denying yourself taking up your cross, losing your life for Jesus and the gospel, helping the deity, praying for people, go making disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything and baptize them, you know, evangelizing everybody you can, and sharing your faith. Uh, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, the Great Commission, these people aren't doing the will of God. They're just believing a prosperity gospel, and I'm very, very concerned that many of these religious people that you know, Brother Eddie, that I know, Brother Eddie, they may stand before Jesus and be called workers of iniquity and told by Jesus that he never knew them. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, many religious people may go to hell even though they say they are saved. It's very, very scary. God bless you all. Amen. Amen, Brother Boyd. Amen. Praise God. The Lord is good. Amen. And we do work like you, Brother Boyd, with many different people from many different denominations. And, uh, man, I tell you, it's a, it's, uh, well, you know you're sent by God. Because when you get uh, beat up enough and bruised and talked about and made fun of and spit on, you know it's of God. Nobody willingly wants to do that. And I thank God for you, brother. I thank God for your family. Um, definitely feel the love of God from your from the word that you share with us here on the Gospel Music Jukebox. Uh, I thank God that he sent somebody, uh, well, as faithful as you are. Uh, you'll never know how much I thank God and thank you, brother, for being faithful and calling in at least once a day. And, brother, you've done that and, and, and much more. You you are going above and beyond what I've asked, and I know you're obeying God. And our prayers are with you, Brother Boyd, and your family. Uh, keep up the good fight. 
always be found obeying God. You know, a lot of times when when we're ministering, like like on the radio, and we're talking about different denominational beliefs, you know, for me, I, I, they're welcome to call in. I, I tell them all the time, call, share your your. If if I'm saying your doctrine is wrong. And uh, I, I quote something about your doctrine of your denomination, and it's wrong. Well, call in and set the record straight. We'd love to hear from you. As uh, long as any man calls in and stays in the Word of God, i got no problem. I'd love to hear from them all. And uh, when I'm researching and studying uh, this the denominationalism move that has swept across America, you know, one thing that, that comes to my mind when uh, Paul was talking about if they, if anybody preach any other gospel other than what's been preached to you, uh, you know, so they got to be something wrong with, with all these different denominations. We should be coming together. We should be working together. Uh, the name above the door shouldn't even be there. It really shouldn't. It separates. Um, hold on. Let me check the phone. Mm. Hello, you've got the Gospel Music Jukebox. Who we got on that end? Hey, Papa, this is Destiny. I'm going to sing another song. All right, Destiny, going to sing another song. Go right ahead. And this is for you. Well, thank you. Desi? Uh, I want to thank the Lord for my wonderful family. Praise God. Well, we thank God for you. And we love you, Desi. Can you hear us? Love you. All right. You call in anytime. Okay, All right. We love you. Love you. <laughs> bye bye. Praise God. Amen. Amen. There you go. There you go. That's why the the name above the door that's separating these children out there, they come together. They just love the Lord. And uh, it ain't about no denominational name or no denominational doctrine. Uh, the thing that God has called me when I go in to meet these different pastors and God sends me to these different denominationalism churches that uh, are teaching false doctrine, I usually sit down with a pastor and talk and we discuss and uh, we share the word and uh, I share where I'm at in the word and they share where they're at. 
and uh we take it from there and and, and god moves and uh you know like I said, a lot of times on the radio, people will twist my words and um, put their own meaning to what I'm saying, like over on Facebook and things, and even listening to the radio. Instead of calling, and if they don't understand a statement, they just jump the gun, you know. But we, I want everyone to know, please tell everyone you know, that everybody's welcome to call in to the Gospel Music Jukebox and obey God. Uh, it's not about, it's not a denominational thing. It, it, with me, that it, it doesn't exist because I believe God's got people in every denomination we can think of. I believe God's got people in there that's like that city that's set on a hill. They're a light, and they keep uh, asking questions, and they keep getting everyone in the Word and saying, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? Where'd this come from? Where'd that come from? Can we back up what we're doing with the Bible? Are we loving our brothers and sisters around the world? Are we, like Brother Boyd is sharing tonight, are we a doer of the Word of God? Uh, are we just in a form of religion? Are we just showing up in a building and, you know, listening to the preacher but not applying the Word we heard, not not taking the Word of God into the world uh, and preaching the gospel to every creature? We're just showing up two and three times a week, uh, give a little money, uh, put a new uh, coat of paint on the wall, make the place perfect and uh, try to get people to come in so we can build up funds. That's not a reason for a church. A church is a hospital. It's a place for the wounded to come and to be filled up like like the Pastor Eddie Garrett was talking about, the Soul Filling Station Rock Church. That's just an example. I love that name because you go there and you get filled up so you can go out. And, and he even himself was telling that seems to be what God does. Some people come for a month. Some people come for a year. Some people come one time, and then they move on, and they get what they need, and they're back up on the battlefield, and then they may be in another county or another state. And like he himself was saying, so that they go in somewhere to get filled up. Because I know as an evangelist out here uh, doing my very best to obey God and, and let my light shine, there's times I've just got to go in sit down where there's two or three gathered up and just worship the Lord and, and, and get myself filled back up, get, get, get myself covered in the anointing and just bask in the love and the anointing of God. And then I can maybe go out for a week, maybe go out for a month and do it again. Go help people. Even when you get lied on, go help people. Even when they misabuse you, go help people. Why? Well, because you entertain angels unaware. Uh, get up. Be busy. You know to do good. Brother Boyd shared it tonight. If you know to do good and you do it not, to you it is sin. You know, really, we got to get our, our, our focus back on Jesus and off of the world and off of the problems of the world. You know, I mean, the, the way it stands with us right here at the Gospel Music Jukebox, it ain't about you liking me or me liking you. You see, it's about me loving you, whether you love me or not. It's about me saying, obey God, encouraging you. If you're sitting at home and, and you're doing nothing, well, here's one way you can do something. You can pick up the telephone. You can dial 1931-229-0768 and share your testimony. You can make a CD of these radio programs and give them away. You can call us if you'd like to have prayer cloths to mail out. We'll get those to you. Uh, there's, you got to start somewhere, but be a doer. Start doing something. And then if you, you start being active and you start doing and you start going and, and hearing the Word of God and applying the Word of God, you'll find yourself busy in the kingdom of God. And uh, you won't be watching so much Wild Wild West. <laughs> no, you'll be saying, what can I do today for the Lord? Lord, as you, your prayer will change and you'll start praying and saying, God, what, what would you have me do today? Where would you have me to go? Lord, as I open my mouth, you fill it. God, lead and guide me in the direction that you want me to go. And next thing you know, you just, you're falling more in love with Jesus. You're becoming more like our precious Lord and Savior by by surrendering your will over and allowing his will to be done in your life. You know, there's a, there's a saying I got. I, I preach this. Those of you that's followed the gospel music jukebox, you're going to know it. Here it is. I ask no man permission to obey God. 
If God sends me to your house, I'm coming. I'm not going to ask for permission. If God sends me uh, across the road to uh, climb the sycamore tree, I'm climbing the sycamore tree. I'm going to do whatever it may be. And, and sometimes he'll take the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Sometimes it don't make no sense to the flesh what God's told you to go do. You know? But if you'll obey God, uh, souls will be one into the body of Christ. You'll be blessed, they'll be blessed, and we'll be blessed right here at the Gospel Music Jukebox. If you're listening and you've done and set in your mind that you don't, you know, you don't like me, uh, you, you know, you don't like what we preach, you don't like what we do, you don't like nothing about us, well, why? Ask yourself why. Feel free to call in. You can call the testimony line and leave your comments. We'll play them on a radio program. You can call live. You can call live at one nine three one four eight four four five three one and and share the gospel, share a praise report, share a, a testimony, share a Bible verse, or like little Desi, call and share a song. And yes, I'm not going to cut the enemy off if they want to call and you know chomp me out or cuss me out. Hey, you're doing it over here in the private messages, you know. Uh, I mean, you see. The truth is, I believe we all have the right to work out our own soul salvation with fear and tremble before God. And just because you in a different denomination or a denomination that I've stood up and said, I disagree with their doctrine, then you better believe I'm man enough. I put my britches on one leg at a time, and I'm man enough to tell you when I, I disagree with Jehovah Witnesses' doctrine. I disagree with the Church of Christ doctrine i disagree with that but i love the people see i disagree with living in a homosexual lifestyle but i love the people and i pray for them and i talk to them when they'll talk to me and and i try to share the gospel and i let them know there's a way of escape there's a there's a hope and his name is jesus you know so we got to keep on keeping on and sometimes we will and we do feel like we're all alone sometimes our own families don't understand what we got to go do but you got to go do it if God told you to do it. See, because he said, don't, you know, uh, don't worry about what man can do to you. But you better be concerned about what God can do to you because he can destroy both body and soul in the lake of fire. In that place of torment where the worm dieth not, my friends. Now, us here, we try to reach out in the community and help people with uh, we try to get people to go to services. My wife, she works uh, trying to get kids to go to, to, to church, trying to get them involved in ministry. We do the radio. We make CDs. Uh, we give out. We work with June, uh, Sister June Graham. She gets uh, prayer cloths and writes verses in them and puts them in an envelope. We get those and try to give those away as much as we can. I said and answer literally uh, today, I was blessed to really get in here and answer a lot of questions. I would say I answered over 300 emails today, and I'm still behind. Um, you know, it just uh, it never ends. And then we go pray for people when they call and ask, and they need prayer. And if we're driving down the road and I see a need, I see somebody broke down, I'm going to stop and offer to help. Sometimes they tell me, no, they got a cell phone, they done called somebody. I tell them, God bless you, have a good day. And I, and I go on about my business. But the point being, the point being, are you offering when you see a need, as Brother Boyd was sharing, when you see a need, now look around your life. Look at the people you know. Do you know someone that needs, well, maybe an ear to listen, a shoulder to cry on, maybe just need you to give them a ride to the grocery store. Maybe they just need uh, uh, somebody to say, I love you, and God loves you more. God loves you. Maybe just an encouraging word. God bless you. Have a good day. Be a doer of the word. Be a doer of the word. Be found doing and applying the Word of God in your life, my friend. You're listening to the Gospel Music Jukebox. I'm your host, Evangelist Brother Eddie Cheney, saying, I love you, but God loves you most. Amen? And I wouldn't take nothing from my journey now, even though I get lied on on a regular basis. I get made fun of. I get talked about. You name it. The Lord said it was coming. He said, don't count it as something strange. Raise your hands up. 
if you've been attacked today raise your hands up i've had to stand by and watch as 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 some of my enemies literally attack my grandchildren the hardest thing i've ever done in my life is keep my mouth shut raise my hands pray for my enemy and give god all the glory and just say god i'll give you my family watch over them protect them as i go and continue to minister and preach your your gospel your word to a lost and dying world i know that god is big enough amen i've just got to leave my family in the arms of jesus knowing that knowing that his will will be done in their lives but it breaks my heart to see adults jumping on kids that just tears my heart out it tears me up inside but yet I know, I know that I'm to stand still. And I know that I'm to pray for those that despitefully use me. And I know that I'm to pray for my enemies, that God have mercy upon their souls. And if I saw even even the enemy here in Crossville that I'm dealing with over his brother uh, living in a homosexual lifestyle, if he came here and he was hungry, or if I saw him hungry, uh, I would feed him. I would offer him clothing. I would offer to bring him home and, and give him shelter as I do bring people home at different times. And uh, uh, I've always did that. It's it, it's in my heart to do that and uh, reach out and try to help them by sharing the gospel and being a doer by saying, hey, uh, you hungry? I'll call the wife and as I'm bringing them home, I'll say, fix a hamburger, fix something. We've got a man here hungry or a woman or whoever it is. And I'll say, we, we need to feed them, and uh, we need to let them see the love of God as it flows from us to them. But as far as, you know, I'm not going to sit on here and tickle everybody's ears so you'll come to the Gospel Music Jukebox, and I'm not going to sit on here and pacify everybody so they'll call in and, and participate and all. I, I don't do that. I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. To the best of my ability, I'm going to preach the Word of God to you, the truth as I see it and I know it at this day and point of my life. I'm going to share with you where I'm at in God. I'm not ashamed of where I'm at in God. I'm not ashamed of my precious Lord and Savior. And I'm not ashamed to say when it don't line up with the Word of God, when I don't see it in the Bible, and you can't back up what you're doing with the Word of God, I'm not ashamed to say, hey, you ought not be doing that. Hey, that's wrong, and I disagree with that. Now, the person, you got to remember, the person has been indoctrinated with these denominationalism that is teaching false doctrines. A lot of these people grow up in these denominationalism teachings. They grow up being taught that that was right. And now here we come along preaching the gospel or somebody else preaching the gospel and uh, they think and have been told that we are of the devil. So they're leery. So they have to we got to be gentle. We got to pray, but we, yet we got to be stern. We got to speak with boldness, such as we ought to. Love covers a multitude of sin. I still believe we got to love the hell right out of them because I don't want them to miss heaven. I don't want no one to miss heaven. I want them to make heaven their home. But it's their choice. It's your choice tonight. If you're listening and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, this is your hour. It's your moment. Reach out and take a hold of the hand of Jesus. Uh, I was trying to check the chat room. I see An uh, my daughter-in-law, Angela, puts up a post. I saw a post today about a family in Texas the dad was just released from a hospital the mom had the mom and daughter hasn't been found and they just found the son dead let's remember to pray for that family god knows the need and what's going on they've been a lot of flood waters a lot of a lot of things going on uh i believe we're in the end days i believe any moment any day could be our last do you believe that I do. I believe that. I believe we're a heartbeat away from heaven or hell. I believe tonight could be someone and is someone's last opportunity to get things right between them and the Lord. Be assured, if you leave this world without Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you've not repented of your sins, you will lift your eyes in torment. 
The Word of God is the truth, and every man a liar. Grab a hold of Jesus, my friends. You're listening to the Gospel Music Jude Box. I'm your host, Evangelist Eddie Cheney. We'll be right back. Sunday morning Everybody gathered in In the middle of the woods At a little white church house And it would fill up with family and friends Then the bell started ringing And the choir started singing The harmonies were sung to Jesus Out in the middle of the woods it was an ordinary Sunday Everybody gathered in Some were clapping their hands Some were tapping their feet But everybody had their mind on him Then the preacher preached the Bible He preached the message loud and good It was an ordinary Sunday Out in the middle of the world How the Lord was so good, He was doing all He could And in the house there was not a dry eye When the roll is called up yonder It will ever more grow thunder And it was there that I met Jesus Out in the middle of the world It was an ordinary Sunday Everybody came Strong cup of coffee Singing rock of ages by the baby 
tradition Where both your body and your soul get fed at the church in the kitchen God. God's good. All right. I was trying to read the chat here. Uh, I don't think he is seeing it before it goes too far down in comments for him to see it. I have no idea what you're talking about, but um, (laughs) if you're talking to me or someone else, I cannot back my chat up when I have the uh, studio open. Um, if I sign in as a guest like you guys and just listen, then I can. When Brother Willie's doing a program, I, I can back it up. But or uh, but when I am on the switchboard, mine won't let me. It just quivers and carries on. So I apologize for that. I don't know how to fix it. If I've missed a statement or something, I, I'm sorry. Just repost and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll catch it. <laughs> Amen. I believe... Uh, I don't know for sure if she was talking about. I did see where she had asked me to play. Yeah, okay, that's what it was. I thought I'd seen that go by. Uh, play, they whipped him up the hill. Uh, okay, all right. Let's see if we can get over here. Okay, let's see. They whipped him up the hill. Hmm, Okay. All right, we're going to give it a turn right here. This goes out to my lovely wife. Amen. Pauline, good to, good to have her joining in the room more and getting active. That that blesses my heart, and it blesses me. I've sat here and cried. I've prayed. Uh, when, when, you know, I know children bless us all, but, man, when it's one of your grandchildren um, or one of your children, like every time my son Chris calls in, you know, he's evangelizing now, my heart melts. Uh, it just melts. There's no other way to say it. God has been so good to me. I, I, can't, I can't even say enough to say thank you, Lord. Um, I could never do enough to repay him for what he's done for me and my family. I just love the Lord. Here it is. They whipped him up the hill. Be blessed. We'll be right back. They whipped him up the hill just for me. They whipped him up the hill just for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. They whipped him up the hill just for me they nailed him to a cross just for me they nailed him to a cross just for me one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. They whipped him up the hill just for me. They laid him 
in a tomb just for me. They lay him in a tomb just for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. They whipped him up the hill just for me. The angel rolled the stone away just for me. The angel rolled the stone away just for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. They whipped him up the hill just for me. He's coming back from heaven just for me. He's coming back from heaven just for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. They whipped him up the hill. Just for me. Hello, God bless all. I love you and I'm praying for you. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho. I was just calling in to say a prayer to praise and worship our God and uh, to thank Him and for Him just to be able to heal and help anyone who needs healing and help. Father, I love you with all my heart, mind, and soul. I want to come to you in the prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. It says, Father, in Psalm 34, 1, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. And I want to praise you and thank you and honor you, Father, that you've made the universe, the stars, all the sun, all that exists, you know, each of the stars by name. I want to thank you, it says in Luke 18, 27, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. It says in Ephesians 3.20 that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything we ask, think, or imagine. It says in Psalm 103, you forgive all of our iniquities, heal all of our diseases, and redeem our life from destruction. I know, Father, you redeemed my life from destruction. I was just controlled by impurity, lust, anger, cursing all, selfish, just all those sins. And thanks to uh, Jesus coming into my heart and life and Jesus dying for my sins on the cross, Jesus showed me the truth and set me free from those sins so and redeemed my life from destruction so I could be in your kingdom and do the will of God each day. Father, I just want to magnify you. It says in Psalm 145, I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. And I just thank you, Father. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. May we praise your name forever and ever. And I thank you, Father, and magnify you and honor you. And I want to pray right now, Father, for anyone hearing this who needs healing, help, and deliverance in their lives. May you touch us all and heal us by the stripes, wounds, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. It says in Matthew 8, 17, that Jesus took our infirmities and bore our Carried, born and carried our diseases, I claim that we are healed. I'm totally healed of those food allergy problems so I can go over to the Philippines and see Edna's family and eat the foods there. Anybody that's struggling with cancer, different depression, ailments, drug addictions, problems, pornography problems and addictions, I claim that we are healed of our diseases. We are set free from our sins. And I claim right now for you to heal all of us and set anyone hearing this free from their sins and addictions also. May you deliver us, Father, heal us and help us. May you give us strength that says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I just thank you, Father, for healing and for helping us all. I also want to take this time to pray for our enemies, for those that are persecuting us, that don't like us, that hate us. It says that we should love them, that we should pray for them, and I pray for all of them. May the love of Jesus fill our enemies' hearts and lives, and may they 
may they change their ways and re repent and be able to know Jesus and to be saved. May many people know Jesus, your son, and may he, we, many people get saved and say, accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. I love you, Father, and I pray this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> But I try to do things all on my own And I end up feeling all alone So you're patiently waiting for my call Because you've been there all Matthew chapter 7, we're told 
to do the will of God. And Jesus even says there's going to be many of these people that said, Lord, Lord, and even went to church and cast out demons and did miracles in his name. And he's going to look at them and tell them, I never knew you apart from me, you workers of iniquity, because they never did the will of God. I don't think just posting some Jesus loves you pictures is good enough on your Facebook page is good enough to get you into heaven. I really don't. Not when Jesus calls us to do the will of God. I heard the story of a Baptist minister who died. He had an aneurysm and died on the operating table, and he stood before God, and God was going to send him to hell. And then they were later able to revive him, and he stood, as he stood before God and Jesus, this was the first time he understood the truly this scripture, the true cost of discipleship, Luke 9, 23 to 26. Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Are you losing your life for Jesus and the gospel? Boy, I mean, Jesus tells us in... We're told in James 1.27 to go help orphans, the fatherless, and widows, and people who say they're Christians could absolutely care less about doing that or helping needy people or praying for people or preaching the Word of God to people. I rebuke them in the name of Jesus, and I say you better start taking up your cross and living for Jesus daily and denying yourself doing the will of God, or you may be called the worker of iniquity and told to depart from me. I never knew you by Jesus. I hope we all can change and go out there and can love people and do the will of God and change the world for Jesus. God bless you all. Amen. Amen and amen, brother boy. Uh, I like how you started that out. Let me ask the question. Amen. These, these, these people that say they love God, but they do not do the will of God. They do not keep the word of God. They do not know God. For the word of God says, if you say you love him and you keep not his commandments, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. Man, that concerns everything from repenting to baptizing to feeding the hungry, clothing the naked. It concerns it all. If you uh, break one of the least, you might, you broke them all. This is why we impress and impress and impress and, and, and cry loud and sound the trumpet. It's why we say it over and over and over you must be born again, or you will no wise see the kingdom of God. You must become as humble as a as a child. Amen. You you've got to be a doer of what you're reading and what you're hearing. He, Jesus Himself, uh, as He's quoting parables through the Book of Mark and uh, Matthew and Luke and John, well, through the Word, He says, "He that has an ear, let him hear." Do you hear? You know to do good, and if you do it not, to you it is sin. My friends, there's a whole lot of people saying they're a Christian, but they're not confessing Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And the tree is known by the fruit that it bears. That's why, Brother Boyd, me and you don't get no money. We don't tickle their ears. I'm not for sale. I'm not going to tickle nobody's ears to get them to sew into the, the gospel music jukebox or the project reach out. I'm going to be patient and wait upon God. I've had pastors of churches promise and promise and, oh, we're going to support you. We're going to send you $25 a month. We're going to, we're behind you. We love you, but you don't see no money. And then I've had them say, well, uh, you know, we're going to have a, a yard sale. Uh, we got to raise money to, uh, do a function at the church or to do 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 something build on or or buy another bus for the church or buy another vehicle or do do something for the building the denomination not the people now the truth is the truth and and, and until people start standing up and saying hey that that's not right this is not right you know which is more important now you 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 guys in the chat room that listen live and listen uh, to the archive, you tell us which is more important: to build a bigger building, or to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit the widows and the orphans. Which one? Which is more important: to show up at a place of worship, a building that's got rules and regulations that's ap absolutely not in the Word of God. You know it's not in the Word of God. It's man-made rules, man-made apply, uh, applying uh, what they feel they need to control that uh, denomination of people. 
It's it's they make the rules up as they go. They can vote and change them anytime they want to, and they do, and it's evident. And I'm not I'm telling you the truth. All you got to do is stay up with the with the news and how churches are voting in same sex marriages and how they're saying uh, they're trying to pass a bill right now, or it may have done and passed uh, that uh, if ministers of any denomination refuses to marry same sex couples, they're going to pull their uh, tax exempt numbers. The government's going to pull their their thing. See, see, the devil was in the tax exempt from the beginning. It's set up that the the government wants to have control. They they want to be able to tell you how to obey God and when to obey God. In other words, they're gonna tell you, well, you can do it over here all by yourself in the corner. They're gonna lock you away in a camp. What are they gonna do? <laughs> if you 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 stand up for the truth, you stand up for for Jesus. Because, listen, if you lose your life for the gospel's sake, <laughs> you'll gain life. Do you hear me? But now, if you seek to save your life, you'll lose it. Now, just think for a minute. What would it profit a man if he gained the whole world, but he lost his soul? Well, in other words, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? That's what it's coming down to. The Word of God told us the world, the world is going to wax worse. People in the world, lust of one another, they're, they're going to heap to themselves having teachers with itching ears. Listen, they're, they're hiring people to preach what they want them to preach, when they want them to preach it, how they want them to preach it. Pastors, in, in 90% of your big denominational churches, pastors do not have control to obey God. They do not seek out those full of the Holy Ghost and appoint them to go take care of the widows and the orphans in the community, not inside the denomination. When they, The ones that are doing it inside of the denomination, that's a country club. That, that's, that's where you only help those who help you and only those you know. Do not the publicans even do that? We're talking about the body of Christ. We're talking about to be real with God means to be a doer of the Word of God, applying the Word of God to your life each and every day of your life. And 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 that's the truth. The the tree is known by the fruit that it bears. But so many people's afraid. Well, they're not giving you nothing. No way. Why why is people afraid? Well, if I tell them the truth, they're going to get offended and they're going to leave. You know, I mean, I love you guys, but if you expect me to tickle your ears so you'll tune in and listen to the gospel music jukebox, you're wasting your time. You might as well wait by now because it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. As long as God gives me breath and God gives me the ability to work and God gives me the ability to take care of the the, uh, funds that need to be taken care of, I'm not for sale. It wouldn't matter if somebody uh, called in tonight and said, oh, we're going to give you a million dollars. We're going to give it to you, but we don't want to never hear you say uh, the word uh, baptism again. It wouldn't happen because I'm not for sale. It ain't going to happen that way. You see, I still believe if you live past repentance, if you live, I still believe you, you better be. You better line up with the word. You need to get water baptized because that is the word of God. Now, I also believe if you die during repentance or right after you confess Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Now, how can I say that? Because I've seen people die, been there, experienced that. I believe they're in the hands of a just God. I will not condemn them to hell. I believe like the thief on the cross that day. Jesus said, you should be with me in paradise. I believe that they are in the hands of God, a just God. And I believe that the word said, if you uh, cry out to God with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, he in no wise cast you out. I believe the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Even the parts I don't understand yet, even the parts I'm praying about and saying, God, show me what you would have me to do concerning these verses. You know, show me what what do I need to do as I'm growing in God. But, uh, you know, that's the truth. The truth is just because they say they're a Christian, that doesn't make them a Christian. Christian meaning to be Christ-like. If they're not Christ-like, then there's the fruit and there's the truth. They're not Christ-like. And until they repent and come out from amongst the world in the worldly ways, until they accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, and they begin to apply the Word of God in their life, they're lost. 
they're going to miss heaven. <laughs> That's the truth. And, uh, you know, if I, if I, I mean, if I got to tell everybody, oh, how good you are and, oh, you're just wonderful because you go to this denomination and you go to this denomination every Wednesday and you go to this denomination and, oh, you're going to be all right because you're out there, you know, you're being seen at all these churches and all these church functions and, oh, it's going to be, it ain't all right if you're not being a doer of the Word of God. If you are not, if you are not applying the word of God in your life, it is none effect to you. As you read the word of God and God writes his word upon the tablet of your heart, just simply do it. If God whispers in your ear, shout it on the housetop. Be a doer of the word of God at all costs at all times, even unto death. Be a doer. If you try to sit down and figure out God's ways, you ain't going to do it. His ways is above our ways. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Just obey God. Obey what he told you to do. And how do you, how do you know you're doing the will of God? Well, he said his sheep know his voice, and no other voice will they follow. And he said there's going to be many spirits come at you, but to try the spirit and see if it be of God. How do you try a spirit? You line it up with the word of God. If something's coming at you and you're hearing voices and things are happening and it's not lining up with the word of God, it's not of God. It's got to line up with the Word of God. For God said He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, my friend. He changes not. He means what He says and says what He means. The truth is going to stand when the world's on fire. And that's the truth. If you love God and you're doing your best to be that doer, applying the Word of God if you live each moment as you live, you're praying about what to do, where to go, what to say. That's putting your faith to work. You see, faith without works is dead. Be a doer. If you're listening tonight and you, you, you're you called in some form of religion, uh, worship, and a denominationalism type of uh, 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 ministry, Really look at your ministry that you're in and say, are we doing the Word of God? Are we doing what we're supposed to be doing? And just answer with the truth. Because the truth will set you free. You know the truth. You know where you're at with God. God knows where you're at in your relationship with Him. So does the devil. And if you're lying to yourself, you you can fool me. You can fool mama, daddy, brother, sister. You can fool your pastor. You can fool people around you. But you're not fooling God. Be aware. God knows you better than you know yourself. Just as sure as you're playing church or you're playing Christian or you're just fitting into society and join some denominationalism church just to to prosper in the community and to just have the pats on the back and to have your name known throughout the community, that's not going to get you to heaven. Oh, you can have your heart's desire. You want the riches of this world, you can have them. They come at a cost, but you can have them. You can have your heart's desire. If you want to be known uh, uh, through the community and you want to go and labor and sweat and work and take care of a building while the neighbor is starving to death, you can get the pats on the back. You can get the financial blessings from the members as if you need to make extra money and, and they're going to throw money at you because uh, they control you like a puppet on a string. And, and and the truth, the truth, it's the truth. You asked yourself this, those of you listening live or by way of the archive, if you belong to any denomination, do you have liberty in that denomination, in that place to obey God? 
or have they scheduled liberty and God right out of the service? Do you have, do they present opportunities for you to testify? Are you afraid to raise your hands and say, I need to, I need to say something for God because you're going to mess the schedule up and everybody's going to look at you and they're going to, they're going to begin to uh, ridicule you and say that you're taking up too much time and, uh, you know, they got to get out of there at 1 30, 2 o'clock, whatever time it is that they're used to leaving out of these, these, uh, program church services. Just look at the truth. Man up and say, well, this is what we're doing. and But don't come up with excuses. Well, this is, you know, we're doing this because we love God. You know, we're, we're going to, we're going to have a schedule, a time. We're going to let people out on time. We're going to, we're going to, we got this programmed. Uh, everybody, uh, everybody don't get a part. You got 300 members sitting out there. They don't do nothing but sit and listen. And, and the, the board of directors are the ones that uh, uh, bring the most money. You find places for them and their children. What about the poor man sitting in the back? What about the poor man that nobody wants to shake his hand because they're afraid they get cooties off of him or something? They're afraid that dirt's going to rub off. Let me tell you something. I go to church filthy. Different churches, many times I go to church right after work. And I go as I am because I love the Lord and I go there to worship God. And many times people shun me. They won't even hug me. They won't even shake my hand. They got on $100 suits. They're afraid that grease is going to get on them. You know what? And it's the truth. It's the truth. Many times as I go sent by God throughout the land and I walk into churches where they don't even know me, you know, they won't even greet you, man. They, they stare a hole through you. They done sized you up. They won't even greet you. No, sir, they, they're going to get away from you. And that night, usually when the congregation gets away, nobody even says, well, come in or, you know, welcome to the, to the, to the, to the uh, house of the Lord or this is our path. They don't do nothing but shun you. Well, usually that night they'll preach the devil just walked in. They don't want nobody new in their little uh, country club uh, courts they play their games in. They don't want nobody to stir up their pot. That's the truth. The devil gets mad as hell is hot when people like me and Brother Boyd and you and the other ministers that God's got all over this world that stand up and just tell the truth, speak the truth, preach the truth over and over and over and say, look at it. When are you going to realize? Read the Word of God. Apply the Word of God. Then you'll see the blinded eyes open. Then you'll see souls won into the body of Christ. Then you'll see the sick be healed because you won't have to call them out. You know, you see you see people calling out people all the time. That ain't what the Word of God said. It said, if any among you be sick, let them call for the elders and letting the elders come and anoint them with oil and pray in the prayer of faith over them. Do it the Bible way. If it's not lining up with the Bible way, it ain't going to work. Because then it's man's ideal. It's man's form of religion. It's man's form of worshiping. But the Lord said, those who worship him will worship him in spirit and truth. Line it up with the Word of God. If it don't line up with the Word of God, it ain't of God. You're listening to the Gospel Music Jukebox. We'll be right back because one of these days I'm going to be walking in Jerusalem just like John. John, oh John, what did you say? Walking in Jerusalem just like John I'll meet you there on the crowning day Walking in Jerusalem just like John I want to be ready I want to be ready I want to be ready No, Walking in Jerusalem just like John Someday we'll rise and shine in glory Walking in Jerusalem just like John Till then I'll tell the gospel story Walking in Jerusalem just like John I want to be ready I want to be ready I want to be ready No, walking in Jerusalem just like John On that 
that trumpet blow Walking in Jerusalem just like John Till Jesus said it's time to go Walking in Jerusalem just like John I want to be ready I want to be ready I want to be ready No, Walking in Jerusalem just like John I want to be ready I want to be ready I want to be ready Walk in Jerusalem just like John. Hey Amen. Praise God. I got happy. I was getting carried away because I want to be ready. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. Amen. Praise God. Hey, um, I want to play a little bit of something for you, and you guys give me uh, some feedback on this. Let me get over here and find it. Amen. Okay, let's see. Do 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 do. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Where where did it go? Give this a listen. And uh, we'll probably listen about 10 minutes or so. And you can be putting me some feedback in if you like this idea. Uh, I'm trying to surprise you, so I don't want to say too much. Just um, give this a listen and let me know what you think about it. The Acts of the Apostles The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Which you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now, when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Altogether, the number of names was about a hundred and twenty. Men and brethren, 
This scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus, for he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his entrails gushed out. And it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem. So that field is called, in their own language, a keldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it and let another take his office. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they proposed two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justus, and Matthias. And they prayed, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled. Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed. Whatever could this mean? Others, mocking, said, They're full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. But these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, 
wonders and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands. Amen. All right. I just wanted to give you a sample. We, we're doing a program. I'd like to hear your feedback on that, whether you're listening live or by way of the archive. Let us know what you think about the audio uh, Bible with the uh, dramatization, uh, you know, with different characters playing parts and things. You know, uh, I believe that is the new King James. I don't believe that's the old King James because I'm, I follow along and a little bit different. But uh, I'd love to have your feedback on it. Uh, check out our new program. Amen. Uh, right here on the Gospel Music Jukebox. Be sure to check that out and uh, let us know what you think about it. Uh, check out all the programs. Check out the House of Prayer. Brother Willie Grizzle from out of Scottsville, Kentucky. He does that. And every now and again, he'll help us out here on the Gospel Music Jukebox. So be much in prayer for him as he steps up and out and does uh, what God has called him to do. I know today he popped into the Bible study 101 that we do. And... Um, he uh, he said he had to go. He was working for the Lord, and he'd check back in later. So uh, he's busy about the, the will of the Father. Amen. And that's what we encourage everyone to get up and do. Amen. Uh, I like to think when I look and don't see familiar faces in the chat room that they're busy like Brother Boyd, Brother Willie, uh, Sister Rachel, and Pastor Jordan, that they're busy doing something for the kingdom of God and the glory of God, that they're uh, ministering, teaching, uh, b being a doer of the word. Amen. That's that's what it's all about, is getting the gospel, the good news, out to a lost and dying world because we're running out of time. Yeah, I, I found it interesting. I, I, I liked it, uh, although I'm trying to hunt a, a King James version of it. Uh, you know, but it is interesting, and, uh, you know, I thought it might be a good way for the children to listen, you know, with the dramas, I station going and stuff, or a family gathering. Anyway, check out the new program, uh, and and uh, be sure to leave your comments. Let us know what you think about it. We're just uh, trying to figure and find and praying about ways to fill air time, because uh, as we find, like Brother Boyd, is, it's hard to get help on the gospel music jukebox. It's hard to get people to come and take a night and minister. And, of course, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I'm sure some of you guys get tired of listening to me. <laughs> Although I love it. I love it. I got the gift. I love the Lord. I can talk about the Lord all night, all day, till I fall out and fall asleep. Amen. Because I love him. And, uh, you know, I, I just thank him for everything he's ever, ever done. Uh, for me and my family and the people that I've met in my life. My God, he's put wonderful, wonderful people in my life. And uh, even the people that he's removed from my life, they've had to go a different direction. Uh, but I know that God's in control. And uh, I know that uh, souls are being won into the body of Christ. Even as we speak all over this world, God has got men and women of God that are obeying and obedient to the word of God. They're sold out to the Lord. They're like me. They done went and fell in love with Jesus. Amen. Done and went and fell in love with Jesus. Praise God. All right, church. We're going to say good night. It's starting to rain here. We're about out of time. We're down to about 15 minutes. But um, I'm already going to get drowned trying to get up to the house. I mean, it's raining cats and dogs. Well, it's raining heavy. <laughs> I keep forgetting uh, I got enemies that listen and they like to jump on anything I got and uh, twist it and make it like I'm trying to preach uh, cats and dogs fell out of heaven or something. I mean, go figure. You'd think people would have better things to do. <laughs> but they are what they are. And uh, we just got to continue to keep getting dressed, putting on the armor of God, continue to preach the word, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, pray for those that... Uh, Try to falsely persecute us. Uh, if we're being persecuted for the gospel's sake, let's raise our hands up and count it joy and thank God. Amen. Because he's good. And besides him, there is none other, my friend. Uh, I believe I saw Bobby and um, them in the room tonight. I'm not sure. I, uh, uh, Sister Vicky, I see her there now. Uh, when they don't have, a couple of them don't have pictures and uh, I don't get to see the writing all the time. 
Um, I want to thank each one of you that took time to stop by right here at the Gospel Music Jukebox. If if you've not helped nobody else, you've helped me. You know, pastors will know what I'm talking about because when you're trying to minister, whether it be a radio program or, or a tent revival or, or a, a service in a building donated to worshiping the Lord, then you, you look forward and you really draw off of your amen corner. You draw off of the ones that are there praying for you you because uh, you need it because, man, the enemy's coming at you with everything. And you're holding that shield of faith up, and it does good to know that you got prayer warriors that are praying for you. And, uh, you know, uh, man, and sharing the gospel while you're sharing a song. They're sharing the gospel, and they're sharing their testimonies, and they're praying one for another. Man, uh, that's awesome. So I thank you, each and every one of you, that could stop by tonight and uh show uh, show your love amen you know i preached it before you've heard you might have heard one of our sermons entitled if you've got god let me see god in you and um, you know not only stopping by here at the gospel music jukebox i'm talking about when we're on the highways and byways when you see each other you know you you greet one another with a holy kiss and you and you uh you know, you don't you don't cross the street and get away from the body of Christ. You go towards them. Amen. We love you guys. Look forward to tomorrow night. Can't wait to see what God's got for us. Uh, I don't know Brother Willie's schedule. Um, I don't know if he can help out any on the gospel music jukebox. Uh, I don't know his uh, schedule for the house of prayer. So you want to go check that out and, uh, you know, get in there and support Brother Willie uh, the same way. Uh, he stops by and supports us here as much as he can. Uh, I was blessed to listen in to a couple of his programs um, uh, this morning. And, man, I'm telling you, 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 you just you don't know what you're missing until you go check it out. That's all I can say. If you got time, get over there, check him out. Let him know how much you love him by uh, showing him. Amen. Well, we love you guys. Once again, pray for me my family. Pray that we be found doing what God would have us to do going where God would have us to go, and always saying what God would have us to say. Know that we love you, but God loves you most, my friends. If you're listening tonight and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, this is your moment. This is your hour. Get things settled between you and God. Cry out to him. Run to him. Hold on to that unchanging hand of the great I am, and don't you let go. Get things right. And watch what God does. Watch what God does in your life. He'll take you, my friend. And he'll use you. If you'll be that willing vessel, he'll make a Bible story out of your life. Be blessed. We'll, well, wait a minute. I started to say. Okay, be blessed, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gospel Music Jukebox. Won't you... Jump on the potter's wheel. We love you. God always has a plan, like many used of man, to show the people what faith is for. David knew it from the start. God was dealing with his heart. An opportunity was knocking at his door. So big after all Stand up, stand up You don't have to be afraid He will give you courage He will give you strength Put your faith in God And I promise if you do He will make a Bible story out of you Eh, 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 out of you Daniel didn't give up when in the gym, the lions they had quite an appetite. Yeah, the king looked up and found God had sent an angel down to turn those lions into cats that couldn't bite. And everybody knows how the story goes. A man was called to set God.